Okay, we're just playing a 45-15 game. Just stick with simple concept. Nice capture. Okay, let's capture again. So, really want to potentially look at going kingside castling, so just bring the bishop out. Attacking the weak pawn in the process. It's looking like they want to stop the bishop from coming to this square here. Wasn't looking to go to there? Was that a wasted bit of tempo? Going to castle. So we've been through the consolidation side of things, looking at putting all of the learning together as one. And now it's about time really to just, uh, you know, play the game and see if it sort of gels as best possible. But one key thing throughout all of it is a matter of reviewing your games constantly reviewing your games every time you've played a game even if you've lost and you took a bad loss and you know why you lost really just review that game take another look at it with fresh eyes and see if you can look at it from the eyes of somebody else seriously more critical proper analytic view not just the case of oh well I lost and yeah I could have done this a little bit better um, but not really looking at the real meaning behind the loss not really looking at the real meaning behind the win or a draw and if you could have improved on the drawn position or if you could have improved on the win because there are ugly wins out there as well Just going to push on to the knight here. So there's a combination of things. The opponent doesn't have to do any of them. I mean, taking the pawn, the rook can take with a check on the king. So he's not going for that. His bishop is protecting the knight here. And the knight is also protecting the pawn. But the pawn can take the pawn with a check on his king. So that might work in our favour. So we'll capture with a check on the king. So there wasn't much effort needed in terms of having a view of that simple opening. What we're trying to do here in this game, it looks like, is we're doing the end game opening from the back. So we're not having to push ourselves forward trying to get pressure on the king area. We could only do this because the opponent left their king in the position that we always say we try to avoid which is king safety so there's one or two things that can happen in this particular game we could look for a simple exchange of the queen taking the queen doesn't have to exchange they can take the pawn and then we've got like these two open files here. So I let me see. There's so so many options. I want to really keep it simple. Bishop could develop defending the pawn is it really attacking the king area but 
But having a look at what the opponent has done themselves, their knight has jumped to this square. Before we go jumping in, because I think that's probably more a drawn thing capturing here. Pushing here, the queen or the bishop can take. Um, rook's got line of sight up here. Bishop can come and protect here. Because the, they've got like their knight and their bishop, stealth bishop, attacking this pawn. Hmm. So it's throwing up a bit of a question as to I've got to look at my back end. Yes, I think I've done enough with this pawn here. Hmm. Am I realistically in a good position? I'm just looking now, I'm thinking, yeah, it looks good, I've got this file here, but for some reason his bishop, his knight, he's got his queen coming across here. What? It looks stronger for them. Now that I'm looking at this. I think, I'm going to have to let this pawn go if I'm going to be improving I could come here to attack their pawn the queen obviously takes their pawn but if the queen takes that pawn our queen can take this pawn here I'm going with that um, yeah something didn't feel right with that So, I like, I always say I like these longer games because it gives you that chance to really look deeper. It's not saying I'm doing it right. Um, I feel happy with what I've assessed. It felt good pushing the pawn up, getting it, but then reassessing. Yeah, you see, look at this attack here. What am I meant to do with that? So, they've actually won the rook, but they've not won the best position because as we've said the queen can go and put a checkmate on their king so if he goes steaming in to take the rook we actually take this pawn so i'm not sure he can always take his bishop back but that's checkmate isn't it he can always block with his knight but then we win the bishop here could always push his pawn down but then we win the we win nothing <laughs> We win the freedom of the rook. Maybe the rook can come and sit up here. So it does push down. So like we said, we win nothing. <laughs> yeah, so we could bring the rook up here. And that's putting pressure on this pawn here. It's blocking off his queen. And it's getting it to safety. Let's bring the rook up. It's getting towards the king area. Rook can come here, put a check on the king as well. That's a key thing. Yeah, that was a very nice... I felt okay with it. That was a nice end game opening, good focal point. But then, looking that it didn't have any real traction going forward. Because where were my checks going to come from on the king? Where? How was I going to put pressure on the king? And the queen has taken the pawn. I'm not sure if that, because the rook can come here, like we said. It's not a checkmate, but we are harassing the king and smothering the king, which is the end game opening. So that's the type of thing I wanted to search for. Maybe I could have moved that earlier. The rook up. Because that looked a bit contentious. It's just. He's now got a nice diagonal towards our king. So either we're going to get a checkmate with our queen, putting a queen here. We go here. He's got the knight blocker, you know, the knight block, knight can block. He's one move away from checkmate. Unless, of course, we push this pawn up. Oh, 
guys there's some sort of interference interference like the bishop can come here interfering with the queen because that is causing trouble but now it's advancing our bishop up we've got a nice diagonal towards the king area blocking off this side <clears throat> but it does have the knight blocker so the queen can't really well it can but the knight's just going to come there but then i suppose we've now got the bishop which can take the knight off the board to put pressure on the king So we're attacking the higher piece with a lesser piece. He, he does have... Oh, cracky. I thought <laughs> for a second I thought he could come here. But the queen can take there. He might actually visualise that and actually come down here thinking he's got it. We've got to remind ourselves that the queen can take the queen. I like to do these little reminders because um, I have done it many times where people have gone to a square where I could have actually ended up taking them and that was in the the process of missing stuff and the knight's done the block the knight has done the block but the knight is the one that was supporting this pawn anyway for the attack And we have to be careful because if we take this bishop here with the queen, his queen comes down, puts a check on our king. Could come here, but then he just slides up and starts peeling stuff off. So simple. It takes with the pawn. We've got a double here, but it's not much of a double because he's got his queen protecting that square and he's got the rook protecting that square might need to get the knight involved to get this rook here so bring the knight here get the rook across facing their queen if they're going to keep the queen there does capture with the pawn so like i say i think we need to get the knight involved get the knight up put pressure on the queen because it does look nice it looks tasty but what's the follow-up that's the annoying thing you know going for a check on the king and then you, you're wanting to push yourself a little bit further to keep that mate pressure on I think bringing the knight out is a good thing to look to put pressure on although he does have like a potential blocker with his bishop uh, I'm bringing the knight out and looking to put pressure on the queen I think the bishop's going to come back here though because obviously we have the potential to take it now Ah, what did we just say what did we just say but our knight can attack the higher piece so we'll go with that no messing on that score because the bishop is looking for this so i want to get this pawn up onto the bishop he's really stalking stuff isn't he he's really stalking stuff what's he actually got here nothing supporting it really he's gone there for ah the bishop attacking the queen let me take a look at this push the pawn this bishop attacks the queen what do we do like to have a look at what the knight can do if the knight can put a check on The knight can put a check on the king. If it goes there, if it goes there, 
night check pawn takes There's got to be something I'm going to push onto the bishop. A smaller piece attacking the higher piece. I suppose his smaller piece is going to attack a higher piece as well. But I'm only thinking two steps ahead here. So I think the knight can do some sort of disturbance on the king here. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. This means the magic knight can come here. After all that. Knight can jump to this spot. Putting a check on the king. If the pawn takes bring the rook down attacking the queen bring the queen up attacking the queen oh in fact there's a whole heap of stuff going on yeah knight up save the pawn takes this is making space for the queen to come here to put a check on the king and we're condensing the king down how many moves is that? One, two, check, three with the rook. That's got to work, hasn't it? Knight, check. Yeah, okay. I can work with that. three moves and it's a check oh he's got the bishop but still oh what's the deal he's taken oh yeah of course <laughs> it's checking <laughs> threw me off oh, that's what you've got to be careful about when you're doing your calculations is remembering what you've calculated and we're also on the rook as well but I think it's more interesting probably just going for this I think it Oh, well, well, it's one move away from checkmate, isn't it? Because this bishop's going to come in the front and then that's checkmate. Oh, didn't reckon on this bishop. But I don't suppose it makes any difference, really, does it? have to look at all the variables simple thing would be taken there but then we do have this pawn here rooks defending this side put a check on the king he has to move to the side and then that's definitely checkmate oh and this is why i like playing the longer games you can really knuckle down and blacks resigned okay so that was a for me a good exercise a good trading tool but for myself it is about reviewing the games that i play constantly reviewing them every single game and then if i want to improve as best possible i have to take action on that not just a glib action of oh well yeah fine i lost so i won't do that again no really look into it in depth your own games because we probably spend more time analysing Grandmaster games, International Master games, any type of Master game or anybody else's games. We, we, we spend a lot of time analysing their games, but we're not them. And for me, the idea is about trying to create your chess, your originality.